One of the physiological scenarios that we teach and is probably very common in biochemistry courses you know, has to do with diabetes. I'm diabetic and uh, my great grandfather was diabetic. His daughter, my grandmother, was diabetic. Five of her six sons were diabetic, one of whom was my father. So you see a very genetic disease here, okay, that's uh, in, in my case, uh, type 2 di diabetic, so, you know, adult onset. So my cells are insulin resistant. So um, if I eat a meal that has carbohydrate or fat in it, um, my pancreas is probably responding. You know, I pro my, my, my beta cells in my pancreas are probably okay, but the insulin just isn't able, by producing insulin, and, and, but the insulin just isn't able to signal my cells to be able to take up uh, the, the glucose. As a consequence, uh, I'm somewhat in a technical state of starvation. My glycogen reserves are therefore smaller than yours. And I can tell this in times. For example, when I was, first became diabetic, I, I love mountain climbing and hiking and so on. And I, I, I noticed that I would go out and I'd be totally exhausted for the first 10 minutes or so. And that's because I have very small glycogen reserves. What I had to do is this metabolic switch over to booting up oxidative metabolism of fats. That all had to be turned on. And it's hard. It's a hard transition. But once it got going, as long as I stay aerobic, in other words, I don't go so fast that I go anaerobic, I can climb forever. Because um, if I stay aerobic, I've got plenty of fat reserves. In fact, it's probably a good thing that I'm burning them. So I'm just a little bit different. I like to teach this stuff in 507 in part because well, there's probably not that many kids in the class, you know, 100, 130 or so students would be diabetic, but it's about 6 to 8 percent of the population in the United States right now. And so, you know, everybody knows someone who's diabetic or maybe your parents are and, you know, what are the risk factors? So we teach that.